I've used the Wisecam V2, I've used and taken apart the V3, and today I want to take a look at the newer V4 and see if it's been improved and what's inside. This video isn't sponsored, I just like Wisecams. Why? Because they're cheap and they work mostly as intended, sometimes. I'm going in completely blind, this box is still sealed, I'm not an unboxing channel and I'm not about to try and be one. But I will say this experience was simultaneously better and worse than my expectation. Solid 7 out of 10. Anyway, here's the stuff that's in the box. I got the gray version because I hadn't seen that one before. I was surprised it included the matching gray charger and cable. I'm slightly disappointed to see that they are still using micro USB. I understand why, it's cheap and it works, but it still feels outdated. I'll connect it to get things started. I do like the super simple moisture resistance they've integrated for the charger. And so far for me, this USB condom has been 99% effective at preventing moisture in the charge port. The red light on the front has lit up. I'll push the setup button on the bottom and be blasted with an incredibly loud greeting. Ready to connect. The speaker works well, can confirm. Setting up the device is super easy through the app. It'll scan and find your device, ask for your Wi-Fi information, take a while to finish its business. I'll name this one Bongo. I'm not really sure why, I just chose that name. Setup completed. I want to get this camera mounted up and see it in action. And in order to mount it with a standard quarter inch screw, I need to remove the articulating metal stand it has attached. This big Phillips screw is strong, very difficult to remove. Those bits of blue peeking out are exactly what made this so difficult, Loctite. How does Wise know about Threadlocker, but Apple still hasn't figured it out? I'll swap tripods and attach the mounting plate to the camera. Now my Wise can be easily mounted to the tripod and we can compare how the quality is and if 2.5K resolution is good enough to be my repair camera. Incredible. The ultra wide angle is a bit disorienting. The frame rate is relatively stable. I don't think I'd use this as my everyday YouTube camera, but it was worth a shot, right? The focus distance has been slightly improved, and it does have a hint of autofocus, but this still isn't going to be your dedicated bird feeder camera. Logically, the next thing was to test how good this camera would be for vlogging. I think most people would use it for this, so I mounted it to my gimbal for that hip vertical video. Flawless. I'm convinced this is a solid competitor to GoPro. Alright, it may not make the best camera for some things, but surely it would work fine as a stationary security camera. That's not why you're here though. You're here because you want to see what's inside. You want the good stuff, the specifications, the knowledge. I'm assuming this is just like the previous versions where the front cover is a sticker hiding the screws to get inside. Sure enough, the small gap is easy enough for a pry tool to slip under. They're using standard acrylic double-sided tape. Good stuff too. After that, we find three aluminum Phillips screws deeply recessed into the frame. Seriously, these go all the way to the back of the housing. Next, I'll work my way around the front and pry up one side at a time. There's a thick red gasket surrounding it. This keeps the front of it water and dust resistant. This is also where I made a nearly fatal amateur technician mistake. It happens to the best of us. I forgot to remove the micro SD card and I was currently ripping the tray off the board. So I pressed it back together to remove it when suddenly... Let's see that again. Yep, the micro SD card ejected at terminal velocity past my head, bounced off the wall, and landed on the desk behind me. Moving right along. The assembly is much easier to remove now. There are just two JST connectors in the back that need to be disconnected. One of these runs to the rear speaker and the other to the rear antenna. Already an improvement, the Wi-Fi antenna is now located on the inside of the housing rather than an antenna on the board. Very good choice. Back to the board, we'll get these two black Phillips screws removed. I'll take a much closer in-depth look at the board and its modules in just a minute. Before the top can be taken out, there's a sturdy ZIF ribbon that needs to be disconnected. Four more black Phillips screws secure the secondary board and lens. I'll get these taken out and set it to the side. This is the first time the screw length has changed though. Two of these are longer than the others. To my surprise, this secondary board houses the actual image sensor. I wasn't expecting to see it this quickly. It's a cute little sensor. The lens is now free to be pulled out of its rubber gasket. This does indeed have a small focus motor attached to it. 
Three silver Phillips screws secure the tertiary board. This PCB has infrared LEDs on it, as well as the microphone connector. The front bezel looks opaque, so I wondered how the infrared lights worked. Sure enough, that black material is actually an infrared filter. It otherwise blocks most visible light. So let's take a closer look at these boards. This is the tiny module attached to the top board. The ATBM6062 is a Wi-Fi module, and the small gold component next to it is a crystal oscillator. The eight-legged IC to the right is an audio amplifier. The V4 is using the upgraded Ingenic T41 chip compared to the previous T31 in the V3. The image sensor is truly tiny, yet packs 2.5K resolution. Compared to the V3, it's actually slightly smaller even. Technology keeps improving. Overall, it looks like WISE has indeed made some hardware improvements to this version and further refined its design a bit over the previous iterations. While it won't win any awards for image quality and would likely only win negative awards for its audio quality, overall, it's a decent Wi Fi camera for a decent price. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below, subscribe for more tech teardowns and guides, and I'll see you next time.